Welcome back to Analyst TV. This is Janice Kovach, and I am here in Perth Amboy with Mayor Wilda Diaz. Welcome, Mayor Diaz. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me, and welcome to the city of Perth Amboy. Thank you. We had a nice tour uh, driving through town. We got here a little bit early, so we got to see some of the sites. We were down by the water. We drove through the new complex and you know some of the older areas of town. So there's been a lot of work done here. This sure um, has. Um, just to let you know, Perth Amboy now celebrating 329 years history. That's exciting. You guys doing anything special? Well, we recently had um, fireworks after many years of absence. Okay. So that was really exciting. But there's a lot going on in the city of Perth Amboy. A lot of development is going on. You're seeing the waterfront. There are right now uh, repairs to our bulkheads. And at the same time, um, very busy working on our budget. We just had our uh, budget adopted. Congratulations. So, and I can tell you right now, it's been a hurdle, and you could, nobody would understand better than you. Yes, definitely. It's a little bit different. You know, I come from a much smaller town, so yours is much larger, but it's still, it, you're still struggling with all the different departments. Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, we have to think differently. I say that government now has to be run as a business. Most definitely. That is one of the things that I think is the hardest for a lot of people to understand. Um, you know, working with budgets, you know, you have to do so much more with so much less. Right. You know, and, and, I, and I think that that's, um, the mindset has to change, I think, especially in, um, in municipalities. It, it's, an ex it's an exciting time because all the change is taking place and you see what's going on, but it's also a much more difficult time to manage. And I, and I can say right now in the city of Perth Amboy, you know, I worked um, four years very hard um, restructuring some of the departments, mm -hmm. um, bringing fiscal responsibility back to um, to our our budgets. Uh, we uh, when I was four years ago, just to give you some um, information, four years ago when I came into the city, we had a debt of two hundred and fifty million dollars. Wow! And I say I'm very thankful that we paid it down uh, fifty four million dollars of that debt. Congratulations. Thank you. And these are the things that uh, in government we have to, besides that we still have to provide the services. You know, people still want their garbage picked up. Mm. You know, you still <laughs> yes, you they have do. To have <laughs> <laughs> you have to have your safety personnel um, operating yes. and uh, um, keeping the city safe. Right. Um, so th right now, you know, in government, we have changed throughout the years. And I think the changes are, are seen, being seen now more than ever. I would agree. I would definitely agree, and, and especially in a larger city, you get to, you see the changes. They're not as subtle as they are in some of the smaller towns. Um, just to kind of pick up on what you talked about, it was four years ago that you ran for office. Now you had never been involved in politics before, had you? I've never been involved in politics, and what happened was that I was always involved with the community. Okay. I, I helped many organizations throughout the years. So I had 20 years in the banking industry, mm -hmm. and at the same time I had the opportunity to help a lot of organizations that were either starting up in, in the areas where I had to help them with their mission statement, their bylaws, also helping them fundraising. Okay. So I was known within um, the community for helping out so many of these organizations. Well, that's good. So that, that you've got that experience as far as the, the volunteerism and the grassroots work that needs to be done. And, and an advocate for a lot of the organizations and, and to help these organizations be, um, again, financially sound so that they can help the community. So the, what made you decide to run? Like everyone, I think that dreams to change the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I wanted to do something positive for the city of Perth Amboy. I knew that I had a lot of talent and that um, working in the financial world that I can bring that skill uh, into government. So, and at the same time, so I really wanted to see, um, I, I was born and raised in Perth Amboy, and I saw a, a vision for the city to make things better for um, the entire community. And also to obviously, you know, now you've become a role model. You know, we talk a lot about women's initiatives and getting women more involved. Mm -hmm. And the fact that right now you're the only female Latina mayor in the state of New Jersey, uh, right? I am the only Latina uh, mayor in the entire state, and I take that with great responsibility. I want to be that role model, that mentor for other women um, to inspire them to also seek office. Because I always say that we bring um, so much talent. You know, we, we're diverse. We're the moms. <laughs> we are. <laughs> the wives. And, w and at the same time, you know, we, we bring a lot of skills that we could implement and, and make things happen. And sometimes I say that we are so underestimated. 
which is sometimes good. Being underestimated is good because then they don't expect you to come out and, and deliver. There's that ex expectation that you're not going to be able to deliver so that when you do, it's really kind of a, not that you want to say gotcha, but gotcha. Oh, th th absolutely. That's <laughs> a perfect. Um, their jaws drop. You yes. Know, they see that we can succeed and that we bring a lot to the table. And, and I say that um, when you take a look at the role of the woman in government, um, we have made great strides, but w I think, you know, you could share this with me, that we, we need to encourage other women also. We do. We need to encourage other women. You know, this is, this is a great way of helping your community and, and be at the forefront of making the decisions that we're not sitting back, that we can be at the table with our counterparts and say, if we feel that something is wrong and that's really is going to be detrimental to a community, that it's not well thought out, that we could also bring light to a, a decision. True. So, you know, that, and, and I really believe that women need to have confidence in themselves. Wilda Diaz did it, you have done it. You know, we, there's so many other women that can also bring s so much to government. And we need to bring other younger women with us, too. We need to mentor them. You know, you talk about being at the table, and one of my favorite, my new favorite sayings now, because I've had spent some time down in Trenton, um, is if I'm not at the table, then I'm going to be on the menu. <laughs> and I really don't want to be on the menu. I don't want to see the work that is important to me or to my family or to my friends go away because someone didn't think it was important. Absolutely. And I, I believe that women, um, especially in the role of government, we can make things happen for our communities. We do. And for our friends and our families. We, we're out with our community. We're out there constantly. It's either in, with other organizations mm -hmm. or uh, at meetings. We attend a lot of meetings. We do. We take, and you know, and I, and I say that we have a 24-hour job, seven days a week, and I think sometimes people don't understand that, that they real, don't realize what we bring to government. They don't. They also want to stick one hat on you. Oh, she's a wife. Oh, she's a mom. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember knocking on doors, and I'm sure you experienced it too, the, the disbelief, like, oh, you know, why are you running for mayor? You know, I, I had people tell me, oh, aren't you just a soccer mom? <laughs> yeah, that's one of the roles, but there, there's plenty of other roles that I've had, you know, and listen to what I have to say, so. Oh, absolutely. You know, throughout the years, I, when I was helping a lot of the organizations, I worked in many different areas. You know, it wasn't only about um, the financial world. When I was helping these organizations, I would hear what was happening in the areas of health. Mm -hmm. Because I, wa I was uh, a chairwoman of a, a federally qualified healthcare center for many years. And I understood listening to many of the residents that needed help, what needed to be done. Right. And, and I think that's where they sometimes, again, they underestimate us. Absolutely, they definitely do. Now, you've served for four years. You've, this is your, the end of your first term. And mm -hmm. normally your elections are in May, but with the changing, uh, with the school elections and everything, now you've moved your general elections to November. And we did that because, um, again, I lobbied for that. Okay. What was happening was we saw such a low voter turnout in May. And at the same time, we were, um, we had to pay $50,000 for an election in May when people weren't coming out. It didn't make sense. And you want a, a, a large voter turnout. Mm -hmm. You want to save money. So I said, you know, I, I convinced the governing body and, and everyone in that this is the right thing to do. Let's move the election to November and, and let's have uh, the public come out and, and cast their votes. You know, there's nothing to fear. True. Sure. And save money. Because if you had the you had your just your local elections in May, because mm -hmm. you still had the general elections for everything else in November. In November, so you were still running two and sometimes three elections. And, and you know, people became complacent; they didn't want to come out to vote. Right. And what was happening? You had a vote in. Okay. <laughs> we okay. We had a vote in November. You mm -hmm. know, we we had November. We had May. Then you had um, committee. Um, uh, the county committee in county. June. I mean, there was so many elections. People just didn't want to come out anymore. And we decided, you know, if one let's save money. At the same time, let's have one election energize the the city, mm -hmm. and let's you know let's let's do it for the entire community. Right. That's the way. Okay. So. Um, Anything that you want to kind of like share with our, our viewers about you, about the city, about, you know, some of your thoughts, you know, going forward? And well, 
Birth the Young Boy is on a renaissance. We okay. have had um, companies that were shut down for many years. We just had um, Hess was bought out by Volpac, an international Danish company, is making a huge investment into our city. I just recently had uh, with our redevelopment agency a, a $90 million contract for 100 plus acres of land to have the land um, developed. You know? Congratulations. So these are the things that are happening in the city of Perth, the Amboy. And at the same time, we want people to come and visit this historic city. Right. You know, this was the capital of the East. The Bill of, Bill of Rights was ratified here. You know, the fa first black uh, voter was here in the city of Perth, the Amboy. I did in the not United know that, States. see? There, there's so a little much bit of history. To, a little bit of history. This is such a fantastic city. Um, again, I take with great pride that I am the first woman ever elected in the history of the city. On the 325th year anniversary, they elect a woman. That was just... What uh, more can you say? No, how much. And, and I take that, again, with a, a lot of pride and knowing that uh, a lot of responsibility. But I'm not afraid to make decisions. Good. You know, and I want the residents of Perth where they might agree with me and they might disagree with me. The bottom line is that the Perth Amboy is on the right track. And I have proven that with our fiscal responsibility. I brought back ethics and integrity to this position. And, I, and I'm happy to know that and I can say that I, I leave a mark, right. a historic mark, along with my counterparts in the city. And I encourage all the women that will be listening to this and seeing us, um, please think about government. There's so much to give. Okay. Thank you. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to On The Loose TV. We are here in Perth Amboy with Mayor Wilda Diaz. Mayor, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the events that may be coming up in Perth Amboy. Um, actually, on August 4th, we have Family Day. It's a great event. All the families come out to our beautiful waterfront. We started that four years ago. And the community really comes together, and we just enjoy each other. And, you know, it's nice oh, to nice. see. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the kids have a great time. That's, you know, uh, so you have different vendors and arts and crafts for the kids. And it's all free for our residents. We, we do it from 11 in the morning to 2 o'clock in the afternoon. People really come out, and it's just wonderful to see everyone enjoying our beautiful waterfront. That is nice. And it's also nice to have the, the community involvement. It's how, you know, people, you kind of keep that people knowing one another, knowing their neighbors. And it's nice. A lot of organizations come out and they participate. So you have uh, even uh, vendors out there that are just giving away, like, um, uh, backpacks for back to school. Oh, very and, and nice. we purposely yeah. did it in August right before the kids are going back to school. That works. Good. And we are also standing right in here in front of a replica of the Liberty Bell, which, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do July 4th? Oh, my goodness. I really enjoy this. They do a reenactment. We read the Declaration of Independence, and right after that, the mayor has an opportunity to ring and read first the uh, proclamation from Congress. Okay. And then at 2 o'clock, July 4th, I ring the bell for the 13 colonies. That's exciting. That's very cool. That's that's something to really, you know, to be a part of that history is really and important. It's, and, you know, and it's just to see everybody coming out. You know, for two days we had a great event. First we had the fireworks down on the waterfront. And then on July 4th we read the Declaration of Independence. It can't get any better. Oh, that's exciting. Well, then you'll have to come up because in um, Clinton, August 26th, which is the anniversary of uh, Women's Equality Day, women getting the right to vote, we are going to do a suffragist walk in the town of Clinton. So you have to come up and visit us that That's day. really exciting. I really do want to participate. Sounds you know? good. So we'll be together. That you know, And again, I want to thank you for coming down. I mean, there's so much great things happening. We do have a lot of events. And, and we have other festivals that are coming up in August and in September. And how do people find out about it? Where can they go? Do you have a website? They, they go right into our, our website, Perth Amboy's website. And also, the mayor has her mayor's Facebook. Oh, oh, that's right, mayor's Facebook page. So what's the, why don't you give everyone the website in case anyone doesn't know what it is? Um, it's uh, Perth Amboy. They just log in right into Perth Amboy, ci.perthamboy.org. Okay, great. So, and all, obviously, all the events are up there. and. Um, absolutely. But I, I definitely would say all you have to do is type Perth Amboy. And you'll and you'll and you'll get our website there. I just don't want to. I'm not sure about the dot org. <laughs> oh, okay, no problem. And then obviously go to Facebook because oh, and, Ma and Mayor Wilde Diaz, yes, become my friends and find out about all the exciting things that are going on in the city of Perth. A lot of development is going on right now. So a lot of good stuff. A lot of great things are going on. Well, thank you for joining us, and it's great to see you. Thank you. Nice seeing you.